time you had people from Toy and
Danielle Rubin. Joined the meeting. Hi, Gail. So hi. Well, then I'm going to call in too. One sec. Okay, great. Nutra Township Boardroom. Join the meeting. Hi, Gail. Can you hear me? Hello. Dale, this is Trustee Rubin. Can you hear me?
Trying this, trying this, trying this, trying this, trying this, trying this, trying this. Maybe. Can you try it now? Mm. Danielle, can you hear us now? I can hear you now. Yes. yes. All right. We <laughs> okay. Madam Clerk, please please will you please call the order? Uh Gail Center Eisenberg. Here. Stephen Moser. Here. Elliot Robbins. Here. Danielle Rubin. Here. John Thomas? Here. Is somebody joining us via Zoom? Mm -hmm. uh, we have a quorum for conducting official business. Thank you. Um, and yes, per, per John's question, implicit question, uh, we have a quorum in, in the room so we can have additional trustees on the phone. So uh, we'll, we'll now stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the Thank you. And Danielle, you can also um, let us know if if we are ever out of um, if our audio is not working. Thank you. <sighs> okay. Um, we are now in line for public comments. Are there any public comments? Ellen. Uh, yes, Supervisor Goldberg. Our, 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 we'd like to be heard on the conflict of interest policy, and if you wish to defer that, whatever is your pleasure. Um, that does make sense. So let's go ahead and do that, and I'll also have you come forward because our, our microphone is right here. <laughs> Thank you. Are there any other public comments? Seeing none, any comments on the phone? Hearing none, we'll move to the approval of minutes from July 13th, 2021. Excuse me, do we have any public on Zoom? No. Okay. You probably would have told us if we did. Yeah, you made a correction. That was last week. Are there any um, edits to the minutes as sent um, from Clerk Capretta? I love that you attach the attachment. It makes me so happy. I move for approval of the minutes from the Tuesday, July 13th. I second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Seeing no opposition, uh, the minutes have been adopted. Supervisors' report. Oh, I of course, don't have it up on my screen. There it is. Some exciting changes to public assistance. Um, the L the LHEAP program that helps our some of our residents with their um, with their uh, uh, heat in the winter. Um, now they won't be checking immigration status, um, so that's great. Um, we, you know, at, at the township, don't check status unless it's required by by um, federal law, um, and that will no longer be necessary. Uh, let's see. Oh, and they'll be giving um, preference to families with children as well. I did speak to Mary Beth Stein and Jan Schakowsky's office. Um, about resuming office hours here at the township. She noted that in the past, um, you know, analyzing the last few years that she had had office hours, um, it was not well used. Um, and she prefers um, allowing Jean to simply refer residents to her directly, 
which we do on the regular basis. Um, so if there's no opposition to that, I think we won't um, pressure anyone to have unnecessary office hours. When you say they were not well used, that was the hours that we had before? Right, so we would have Mary Beth sit here for an hour a month. <laughs> and I think she said two people in two years or something came. Um, but she speaks with many of our residents through referral basis, yeah. just not necessarily at the very moment that we had her sitting here. Passports are back, and Larisha is, using, is signing up people for that. Um, our building is running well, and we are requiring masks in accordance with the CDC policy. We had never really, we had never taken down our mask policy, um, you know, so we're, we're ahead of the curve on that one. Um, but there will be more updates when we get into the, biz, the building operations updates that are more apropos. Um, also keep a note on the dispatch. We'll have some of the cool upcoming dates, um, but importantly will be the senior um, power of attorney program that we're doing in, um, in collaboration with the, with the North Shore Senior Center and the North Suburban Legal Clinic, and that's September 24th, 2021. Um, also, we this on the August is it 18th, Jan. Oh, um, yeah, my Kevin We'll have we'll have in here in this room. We'll have um, a um, property tax appeal program. So far, <laughs> in collaboration with many of our other elected officials, um, and we just set November 13th. Double checking before it goes on the record. It was actually in Jack's report. He had said it was um, a tentative date, but it is now a for real date, November 13th, mm -hmm. as the date for the next Shred event. So we had such overwhelming um, uh, interest in the Shred event that we needed to set another date. We are doubling capacity, and we're doing it at Regina Dominica, just like the book, the book drive, which, as Jack reported, was, really, was a great success. Also, we got a really nice day, so that helped. Um, but it, the setup is really good for a drive-through program. So hopefully that'll that'll fix some of our um, transportation logistics, um, and we will be clearer to people that you gotta you, when the trucks are full, the trucks are full, <laughs> and we cannot stuff more paper into them. Um, if anybody still needs to sign up for board boot camp, please do so. Um, those are available to us, and we have renewed our memberships for um, toy and talk and we will be doing so for Metropolitan per our discussions last time. Any questions on the supervisor's report? All right. Trustee committee assignments, very exciting. Um, one, of my, one of the most important parts of being a supervisor is setting, setting these assignments. Um, the trustees assigned to these various agents, um, Citizen Advisory Committees report back to our board um, and provide important information about how the agencies are doing um, throughout the year, as well as provide important context and deliberations while we, when we get time to approving the funding for our agencies, uh, because we do most of our social services funding through those agencies, through those agency allocations. So Danielle Zinrubin will be assigned to the Agency Oversight Committee. John Thomas will be assigned to mental health. Stefan will be assigned to money follows the person. And Elliot Robbins will be assigned to the peer jury program. He has already started um, his assignment. They had their first, um, they had their first orientation for new jurors. Yes, nice and sounds like it's going well. I, I, could, I could tell you what's going on. We had about 20 jurors in here. And uh, this program has been dormant for about 18 months between the pandemic and the fire. We've got to get it up and running again. We had 20 jurors in here. They were all masked. They sat around here. We had an observer from the Village of Niles. The Village of Niles is very interested in our program, and they want to get something going. We had a well-met police officer here, and we had some former um, uh, peer jurors that had graduated, and we put on some, um, uh, some mock um, cases for the jurors. We talked about confidentiality and all the important things they need to know. I think we're going to have a crop of 20 to 30 jurors. Every one of our jurors is vaccinated. We have one young lady who is not. She has some autoimmune issues. If she has a medical clearance. To participate in peer jury, you're going to need, our jurors are going to be vaccinated. Our offenders and their family member who attends are going to need to be vaccinated and all 
youth officers or police officers involved will need to be vaccinated too. So this will be a, you know, a, a vaccination. This will be as safe as we can conduct it. We're going to try to socially distance and get a little tight back there, but we're going to we're going to work through it. I also plan on meeting with um, the chiefs of all of our municipal police departments as well as the youth officers and try to really get them um, to reinvest in terms of committing um, offenders to the program, lessening the, um, the load at the juvenile court, and, um, and really getting off to a, a good start. We're going to have our first cases, God willing, in September, and um, it's one of the shining uh, programs that the township offers, and uh, we really want to get a lot of cases, and we want to get all these municipalities to find cases. And, uh, there have been a couple municipalities that have blacked off a little bit before the pandemic, and we want to bring them back into the fold, so the program is really up. And I appreciate that. Um, Ali will be the first trustee assigned specifically to Pure Jury for the year to try to kind of rejuvenate this, this program that be, because it had had to be dormant during that period. Um, point of order, mm -hmm. that's not a committee assignment. And it came out of left field, so I was a little surprised that it to be honest. And we also have traditionally had a trustee at large. So is LA to have a two-fold purpose or a single-fold purpose? And I want to clarify that. And then I also want to ask John, were you on mental health recently? Because I just came off when you followed the person a year ago, so I don't make a switch. I was just throwing it out there. When we last on money followed the person, no? You're asking a question that I can't quite understand. Yeah. When were you on money follows the person most recently, you know? Oh, four years ago. Four years ago, okay. Well, that's when I recused myself and didn't stick. Okay. Right, so back to the previous question, which is, is LA's role dual purpose or? It is not, it's not a point of order. Um, they've always included on our agenda, the trustee committee assignments has always had special projects as the fourth one. If right. that's what you're referring to for a trustee at large, right. um, that's obviously not a committee. I'm simply following the, the um, paradigm, which was to include that fourth trustee in that fourth spot. In the past, those special projects have included the website, for instance. No, I'm asking <coughs> you both, is what I'm asking. His, his role this year is to, um, to be the liaison to the peer jury program and to ensure that we are following best practices in that program. So and what I, happens to the other role that uh, trustee at large used to fulfill? There was no role that that trustee at large. It was always a special project. So isn't there some special projects still? I'm still trying to clarify <laughs> I Who's think, doing what? Let me suggest this. I think that by accident, what Elliot has got here is a special assignment to report to us this year on peer jury. You can determine. You can call it what you want. <laughs> you, sure. Um, but it's 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 not a it's not um, a point of order in that regard. For what it's worth, I will be attending peer jury as I do anyway, mm -hmm. every month, yeah. uh, acting as a youth advocate, but I'm also going to go beyond that and we're going to be talking to uh, the chiefs and the youth officers. And I want to make it clear that I am available. Remember how I substituted? If somebody needs me uh, as a, um, a designated hitter, <laughs> here or there or something, I'm, happy, I'm available. Well, I appreciate that. Um, um, no, always the team player. I've got a couple of questions. Yes. Have you any idea? Well, two questions. Are all the police departments in our township involved? They're all involved, but some have not been sending cases with the frequency that they've had in the past. Oh, okay. So we need involved, to get, but you're yeah, pushing. We're, we're going to push them, and we want to get our caseload up there. Now, do you have any idea what the backlog of cases might be because of these long time? I will say this, that in a general sense during the pandemic, law enforcement uh, has been very lenient. If you guys all have read about how jail <coughs> how people with various degrees of criminality were allowed out, I mean, prosecution has not been over the top here. So a lot of youth have probably skated. Serious cases <coughs> during the pandemic, serious cases had to go to um, juvenile court because peer jury wasn't even an option. But um, now I think, you know, you have kids, even though we've got this Delta situation, they want to make up for a lot of time. So I suspect there's going to be some shenanigans, the monkey business. Uh, I know there's going to be vaping. I know they're going to be underage parties. I there's no need to speculate. We'll wait for the referrals yes. to come. But I think yeah. we'll be busy. I, I hope we'll be busy. Yeah. 
I'm sure I'm sure we will um, with you um, being the cheerleader for the the um, rehabilitative aspects of Fair Jury. Uh, clerk's report. Okay, I'll throw my thunder a little bit here. <laughs> so uh, the task force does you said are open. Uh, oh, they opened sorry. last week. I was so um, excited. I was really excited, and Larissa's really excited to be doing it again. Uh, she's going to hold similar hours right now, um, which is three days a week, from 10 until 3 are appointments. She's taking appointments. I think she's already have appointments for 15 passport applications, so she's super excited. Um, parking placards are open. Um, Go to registration is technically open as well, but right now those are neither in high demand. But we're right. all back in business, so that's the clerk's report. Fabulous. Diane, you didn't go through the, the Elliot gave his report, but the rest of us didn't. Okay, we we didn't have that on the agenda. Mm -hmm. Trustee committee assignments. Assignments, yes. You were assigned. You attended a meeting already, right? Pardon? Wasn't there a meeting last night? Uh huh. Oh. <laughs> well, I think I'll report on the shortest meeting ever. Okay. It didn't happen. It was postponed for a month. month. Okay. Which is why I didn't ask for a report. Uh, assessor's report, Jan. Yes, we actually have an update, which many people may be aware of. And I'm just I'm going to read exactly what's on the treasurer's website because I love I like the way she put it. Mm -hmm. She's taking nothing for granted here. <laughs> we anticipate mailing the tax bills in late August. The bills will be posted to CookCountyTreasurer.com in mid-August. The anticipated due date is October 1, 2021. That has not changed in 10 whole days. Maybe it'll stick. We'll see. But the, the main point out of it is that the tax bills will be available to people online well before they are out in the mail. And we are probably now getting, well, not probably, we are definitely <laughs> getting more calls from people about, where's my tax bill? Did I lose it? <laughs> than anything else. And people people are people came to on August second that they might have had taxes due on August first. <coughs> but so hopefully they will be coming out fine. Mm -hmm. Fine mm -hmm. And that's for you. Fabulous. Cool. And hope everybody will join us all for the property tax program. That's true, yes, that's true too. Uh, more info in your dispatch. We will, that'll be that'll be in the dispatch this um, week and I will ask Jack to post that out on all our social media. Absolutely. All right, Thank Diane, you. back okay. to you. Okay, the documents, we have two documents, as we routinely do. The two-page document excuse me, is the recap for both the town fund and the general assistance. Just noting on page one, which is our town fund, just a quick recap that the total funds as of June 30th was $2,151,247. The levy receipts, the personal property tax, all of the different revenue sources are under the activity posting, giving us a cash balance of a million one oh oh seven six forty three. Subsequent to that are the year to date assets <coughs> in our excuse me, in our bank uh, checking accounts, our payroll, et cetera, which are you know demonst demonstrates that we have at that point in time. Page two, same information for our general assistance noting the levy receipts and the interest and the total for the cash balance was a million one forty two six oh four, which is supported by our bank checking and our excuse me, money market account. Okay. <coughs> for the record, once again, I would like to raise the issue of whether or not we should have all of our funds in one bank. And given the return that we're getting at the moment, I think it would be worthy to shop it out. So I I made that Comment numerous times. I, I do have that on the list. I think um, I don't. It's my opinion. We're not going to really get interest that much more unless we look into it. Certainly, certainly, I will reach out to them. Reach out to the prior bank. If you recall, we had uh, closed two accounts right. um, back probably about five years ago. Less. So I think that that. Because it was during our. Um, was it during our, your? Yeah. Okay. So I can certainly. I would think those would be the ones we want to revisit. Uh, Chase Bank, but once I get that information, I'll be glad to provide it. Um, there used to be, but there really isn't any more local banks. That's correct. Byline um, bought out, right. uh -huh. et cetera, et cetera. But there's still these branch offices where the office is very active in the village of that. But we're only doing 
for all the reasons you just mentioned. Uh, the M.O. Harris, short person who is returned to the whole state facility. Um, we and you, I think I heard you say you don't have any reason to believe that the other banks would have much greater interest rates. In other words, shopping out and get your budget. No, I think we have to do it. We, we can certainly do that, um, and I'll do the report back. Okay. I'm not concerned about the interest. We made $580 in interest off all our accounts so far this year. Mm -hmm. I'm much more focused on spreading out the accounts so that we don't have all the accounts in one institution. Yeah, think right. So that's where I'm coming from. It's not the interest I care right. about that. <laughs> no, Although no, it matters, no. but in today's world, it's not worth anything. Exactly. But it's the fact that we're in one bank with right. everything. Right, so exactly it's the reversal of what the prior board had decided to do. Uh, I agree 100% with Stephen. As a public relations thing, should we not spread out our um, I think it would be good to have that as an um, an action item if that's something that you're interested in presenting, because um, I'm sure that there I, I just don't know the the costs and benefits because um, we did cost choose. Benefit, you know, it's not a cost benefit analysis. You should never have all of your accounts in one institution. Period. Bingo. Period. It's not a function of anything else. The previous it's, it's board did the federally insured amounts. Right? But there's also that you have to factor in the time and this is know. this is not on the agenda today. So I do appreciate that this is something we want to discuss, but let's make sure that it is given its due discussion. Finance one oh one says So I will make sure that it's added next month. Okay. okay, moving on to the four page report, which is a breakdown, excuse me, of um, all of the front line items. <coughs> I've gone through this uh, several times, and so everyone's now familiar with the different areas. Just uh, what I'll do is highlight that this is four months of the fiscal year, which is 33, actually, point 33. And just noting, um, I've highlighted a couple items that kind of pop out to me. The total revenues for the period overall for the town fund is 38.66%. The uh, that the line item above there, the other car, uh, other income, is a total annual dividend. So you see the 99%. So that's an annual dividend that you get. For the budgeted expenses, programs and services, I think I mentioned this last last month, we're sitting at 33%. This is because we. First of the three uh, payments were made and issued for the agency. Moving on to page two, the well, summer camp scholarships are at the 98%. Also noting there has been, I think, an additional one, Gail, correct me if I'm incorrect, and right. that is going to, I've noted that in my file, that's going to push us over our actual dollar amount of food, which we will need to address at the end. There's an item down at the bottom, if everyone has noticed, you're going to see the miscellaneous item. And what that is, is based for the, uh, it's holding, it's a holding for an incorrect deposit that has been uh, posted. It should have gone into the, uh, uh, excuse me, the angel fund, but it has gotten a little mixed up in the research paperwork and it landed in our town fund. So, and I think Gail, you probably saw that. I saw that reverse, yeah. Right, so this is just going to be reversed out, but it does pop out. Third page, um, I think I've mentioned this before, the insurance and bonds is giving us 65%. That's a result of our, uh, our insurance with uh, Tormo, and we also have one in there for our time. Uh, total town fund expenses is giving us 27%. Um, so that does include the first quarter, but or the first four months, but um, this is something that we just want to monitor and then monitor as we go forward. Last page is the same information for the general assistance account, noting that the general assistance revenues are sitting at 39%. The hospitalization insurance is 75% would pop out from my point of view, and that's catastrophic once at one time 
payments that we make for our general assistance. Total general assistance expenses is at H186. And when looking at both the town fund and the general assistance, we're looking at a 38.71% for the grand, the grand total for the revenue and expenses <coughs> expenses are sitting at 24 or 25%. Going to the consent agenda, is there any issue from our, um, not, well, from our staff reports, not consent agenda, um, that anyone would like to pull for discussion? I heard rumors that we may be transitioning our public relations. Do you have any comments on that? That is true. Um, I was notified by Jack McCall that he will not um, be seeking renewal after September 30th. September 30th? Yes. So, Jack. Jack will not be seeking a renewal of his contract after September 30th. He will not be renewing. He will not be renewing. Are you we looking for a replacement or more? I just asked for um, an RFP from, from Northfields is also looking, um, so I'm going to revise that. Um, and, you know, if anybody wants to be involved in that, that would be helpful. Um, if anyone has any thoughts, on the other option, which was to have an additional staff member. So right now we have a contractor. Um, but those are, you know, those are things I'm mulling. Um, and if anybody has strong feelings, I would love to discuss them with you. Um, just because we have other things around the office that could be done, um, yeah. and employees might be helpful. Um, the various Government agencies in the metro, which are all smaller than the ones that were mentioned, but even small though they may be, they all have usually a, a younger person, but a full-time, we'll call it marketer or public relations, and it seems to work pretty well for them. Um, I don't know who, either here in Lynette or up in Lynette, uh, really is knowledgeable on it, but. There's got to be somebody I'll be happy to make a few phone calls and see who might provide us some advice. Certainly, and we'll want to send out the RFP to anybody in the area, and we'll post it publicly, of course. Mm -hmm. um, Diane, is it possible to estimate what approximately our, on an annual basis, we spend with this and Rich? Just uh, we were, <coughs> we're hovering around forty, forty-five thousand. If you recall, on the, with the prior board, and that's when um, Kevin Boyd was in uh, charge of the website, which is another discussion. Um, it went up to probably the fifty thousand dollars. That was due to a lot of um, hourly charges. And I think the Gail's point is that if we're looking at something that's on a basis as an employee or a basis as a percentage, without uh, I don't know what the quite the word is, but not hourly, because that's where I think a lot of the hours got. So I did appreciate especially um, Jack's com combination of communications and outreach, and I think that is something I would like to see continued um, because they do dovetail well. <clears throat> and you wonder for that 40, 45,000 a year with Jack, how many hours of actual work we were getting, and if we spent that same 50, 60,000 dollars on an in-house person, we might get three times the amount of work. That's, that is the question. Um, so the, you know, and certainly there was differences per year uh, on what the, the costs were. Yeah. Um, the, and the, the model that we had gone to would have been significantly less than that, um, so. And then also included in that are your costs that, uh, for the different uh, contractors that you use. Right. For the uh, development, the publication, the design and all those different items. Right. So we would want graphic design to be a part of the same process. Yes. We want, you know, layout to be a part of the same process. So really taking all those and combining them into a person would be ideal. So we'll just put that into a machine. And, and, and maybe even yeah. a headhunter might be available to help. If anybody knows of a governmental headhunter who does it, right? Because <laughs> like, um, usually they're paid by the entity, right? Um, How do they get a percentage? Are you sure you want to go with an employee? Well, that's well, the question. Because right. <laughs> I, to his credit, Jack made the concert much more visible. Absolutely. Oh, I think so. He yeah. up all of our social media platforms. Absolutely. So there was a lot gained by that. And I also think there was some merit to the fact that he wasn't an employee but was an outsider. I think that creates a balance. 
Yeah. 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 There are, yeah. Exactly. There can be, but right. Uh, well, you already have a lot of established contacts. Certainly, yes, yeah. yeah. that's certainly a, a benefit yeah. to someone who ha who knows the uh, the contacts for press releases, etc. Um, important. Um, so yes, that is certainly going to take up a good deal of the next month, but he is already told me he's willing to help you know, with the transition, um, but that we want to make sure that that's in place long before his contract ends so that he can help with the transition. Uh, less than 60 days, so we got to move on. We do, yeah. Um, which, and, and uh, uh, Diane just brought up that we, we did execute a three-month um, uh, agreement okay. website um, for a website. Uh, what's it? What's it called? Uh, the, yeah, but what's the person called? Uh, the uh, webmaster. The webmaster. Correct. Someone right. specifically to help us with the website. And everybody on staff, it's Jan, <laughs> is, is is included as an emergency contact. So, so this is Jack. No, 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 no. no, no, no. no. Oh. We have a we have oh, a webmaster. Oh, we're going to have a dedicated from Jack Civic Plus. Uh, Civic yeah. Plus. Okay, yeah. Great. Who can do more than just the basic Good. changes? Changes, yeah. Right. And always so, available for the different. Right. Available. Yeah. yeah. Right. So. Part of our contract. Right. No, we had to add that. We had to add that. Right. Yep. Can you tell us the name? At some point. That was part of the no, the, part of the discussions with Jack when we changed his his um his contract this time was to take away website from him because he um was not a webmaster. We were asking him to do but, but what yeah, yeah. <laughs> Civic Plus, there will be the content because everyone will be able to access. Well, yeah, but I just, you'll tell us who that person is yes. rather yes. than our, you know, picking up the phone and saying, hey, where's, the, where's the contract for me? Where? Right. Or the contact, not the contract. Okay. <coughs> right. All right. Uh, anything else um, from regarding, oh, sorry, I do want to focus, I do want to mention Brian's report because I think it's important. Um, so behind Brian's report, he did include a copy of the eligibility criteria for funding that you usually find inside the inside the funding form that have been slightly amended um, for for clarity and to reduce redundancy, um, but also the guiding principles for Nutria Township, um, and finally the financial support issues. Please take a look at those carefully. Um, many of these. The financial support issues are concerns that Brian has had over the years that have been not codified, but have been guiding principles, and having them written down will provide clarity to our agencies and our, and our trustees, and I will be asking that we adopt them in the, in the future before we vote on our next allocation. And it looks like under the new um, criteria, we'd be losing two agencies. We would be losing two agencies. Yeah, they came in so. and they'd be going in some local youth services because they're exclusive to two agencies. Right. So that is the main concern is, you know, making sure that Nutra Township is funding um, organizations that serve all of Nutra Township. Um, and so, but that is, you know, obviously not codified at this point. I don't know why... We want to limit agencies that we fund based on their yeah. reserves. That doesn't intuitively make sense to me because we want to fund any agency that benefits the township. That's back to the old idea of our, uh, do we give out money based on need, or is there some situation where it's just appropriate to do it? Well, regardless of their own situation. That is the question. Um, the okay. proposal, so this, these guidelines and, um, and financial support issues came from the same committee and committees um, that we'll be discussing in a moment on the um, conflict of interest policy. Um, but yes, the, the general feeling coming out of that committee was that we should not be funding those organizations that have large reserves. The township itself is not allowed to hold that kind of reserve. We kept it exactly analogous to the statute for the township funds. So. Did that come from all three committees or one in particular? All three were represented. Let me get this again. I came rolling through the office on something else, and Brian had just put this together and given it to somebody, and I had read it over the weekend. Um, are we going to look 
brief this and at some future date discuss it? Yes. That's what I just mentioned, yes. But we're not going to try that tonight. No, I just want you to take it to Mull. Why? Yep. Because he did attach it, so you should know what that is. These are all things, I think you said this, these are all things that have been weighing on Brian's mind for some time. Absolutely. Not just this week, but last night for years. Right, absolutely. And I will have him come to discuss why those things were weighing on him. This week, he had obviously pure jury, he's got a lot going on. So I didn't want to make him stay twice in a row. Okay. Okay. The very important building operations update, back to Diane. Okay. Just a couple things to give you where we are. As everyone noticed, we have a little area out in front. That's a result of having had the relocation of our North Shore gas regulator. It is now outside. I think I've kind of gone into detail with this the last week, but I'm sure you've seen that, and we are waiting for them to schedule filling that in that section. Okay. The elevator pit, I think I had brought that up at the last meeting. That has now been completed. Can you speak up a little bit more? I just want to make sure we're picking up. Okay. The elevator pit had been... I can make sure that it's a little bit more. The elevator pit had been full of water. I think I had mentioned that back at that point in time. Since then, we've had the sump pump taken care of. They've updated that and gotten that. It's been drained. It's been sanitized and cleaned. It's been checked. In fact, today we've had a routine amount of... What they do is a monitor. They do an inspection. We had an annual inspection, and we had a test done, and that's done. So everything with that is going fine. The elevator is operative, and that's been taken care of. The vault paint, I think, Elliot, you had brought that up. We were talking about that. That has now been sanitized and cleaned. As of Thursday and Friday, there's going to be a gentleman from... Rebuilding. Rebuilding together. Finishing painting. He's done priming down there. So then it should be ready. So we wanted to get that done so Brian could move all of the... all of our units or all the different kinds of storage back into there. Duct work. That's going to... We had talked about that. That was moving down to the end of the list of our items because we're doing it as a success and a profit so that everything is cleaned and we're just going through that. We're now going to have the duct work cleaned throughout the building, I believe. Wednesday... Tomorrow's Wednesday. Today is the 4th and the 5th. That's going to take place at the evening for this reason so that no one is in the building. So that will be addressed. The gentleman who's going to... or the young man who's going to be doing the painting is going to be there from 9 to 5, so he can't be there. And I think that that... Oh, and downstairs, everything has been sealed. I think I went through that with the work and all that on the walls. And now we're going to have painting and different boards and then put that together. So that is the most recent. That doesn't come until after the call. Seal everything up and then you do more review? No, no, no. Oh, I thought you meant the testing. No. Oh, right. That's all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did mean to test it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Answer your question. No, we have. Okay. That's all. Okay. Let's be back. We're speaking with the room. One quick follow up. Excellent report. I know the room well. Back there with all the shelving and everything that's all going to be painted. What about the room, the hallway that you go through as you get to that room? It looks like that hallway has some new drywall on it. And then along the uh, hallway, there's some baseboard areas that should be painted over. That's on the list, but that's not related to the fire. We're going to have that done. Um, they've looked at that, and they're going to. And we have um, uh, an eternal problem, if you will, with the wall on the north side of the building because that basement is below that the, uh, the street level or whatever the case yeah. is. Um, it has always had different issues. Uh, we've had everything. Not for investors. The brick, it wicks in the moisture. Yeah. Exactly. Huh. Exactly. So we, that's, that's going to be addressed. There, we had them look at that, and that but that's going to be fine. So, so there'll be a sub subsequent painting project to the one that's going to be Correct. Correct. Thank you. Correct. And come 
longer routine maintenance, but or maybe not so routine. Yeah, because well, nothing is routine at this juncture. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> but feel free to go explore downstairs. You might That's, find you don't appreciate historical how relics. The building is until you go down. Oh my gosh! Anyway, <laughs> it is tr yeah, some true. very cool antiques too. Yeah. Um, it's certainly sturdy. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, anything else on the building operation? Okay, and, and my the report from the staff is that people have been very um, considerate regarding masks as far as um, reopening goes. Um, they have not had any issues. Um, so I'm glad to hear that because I know other places have had concerns. So, um, all right, we are at new, we're at new business, but in the future I'm going to switch it to switch continuing business and new business around because I don't believe we have new business. Seeing none, going to continuing business, our conflict of interest policy. Um, Ellen, you had um, postponed your comments until now. Um, I'd like to invite you to come and speak to the board. If you want, you can come as close as you can and try to speak up so Danielle can hear you. Yeah, I'd, <laughs> I'd like to be heard. Um, thank you very much, uh, Supervisor Eisenberg, for inviting me to speak on this important issue. Could you, could you give us your name and village? Yeah, that was my next statement. Um, I have about five minutes. Um, my name is Ellen Van Vechten. I'm a member of the Agency Oversight Committee and the Working Committee that prepared the conflict of interest policy under the leadership of Supervisor Eisenberg. I am not, however, speaking on behalf of either committee because both committees have already submitted their position in full to the trustees. Rather, I am speaking as an individual, a township resident, and a taxpayer. I don't want to be here. I've been talking about this issue for years. I wish to voice my dissatisfaction with the way the trustees have handled an ongoing conflict of interest and urge the Board of Trustees to pass the committee's conflict of interest policy without further delay. Nobody wants to say it on the public record. But Trustee Thomas is the treasurer and a member of the board of the Winnetka Youth Organization, the WYO. He has served the WYO for decades. By his own count, he's been, since he's been elected as a trustee, Thomas has voted in favor of a grant to the WYO four times. In total, the four grants represent about $200,000 of the taxpayer's money. In the fall of 2020 and in January of 21, I had multiple conversations and email communications with then Trustee Eisenberg and Trustee Robbins to urge that Trustee Thomas be recused from a vote on funding for the WIO at the January 2021 meeting. Despite my objection, Thomas's conflict was not disclosed at the public meeting, and Thomas seconded the motion and then voted in favor of an award of $55,000 of taxpayer funds to the WIO. Please bear with me. It's warm. It's okay. <laughs> um, thank you. Uh, thereafter, in April of 2021, the Agency Oversight Committee submitted a written memorandum to the trustees to voice multiple objections regarding the ongoing conflict of interest. In June 2021, Supervisor Eisenberg formed and led and chaired the Committee on Committees to study the issue and prepare a conflict of interest policy. She submitted that committee's work product to the trustees for approval at the July 2021 meeting. At that meeting, Trustee Moser objected to the policy as overbroad and stated his opinion that the trustees should self-regulate. The problem, however, is that the trustees failed to self-regulate for the last four years. 
the trustees knew of Thomas's decades-long affiliation with the WYO. They nevertheless continued to acquiesce in his conflict by allowing him to vote on the WYO's funding year after year, and even in 2021, after I voiced an objection. In what looks like an effort to justify their prior inaction, it was suggested at the July meeting that it was not a technical statutory violation for Trustee Thomas to vote in support of grants to the WYO. In fact, however, it was a violation of long-held principles of the common law that prohibit elected officials from taking actions in matters in which they have a personal interest. By allowing Trustee Thomas to vote for the funding to the WYO for four years, the trustees have acquiesced in this violation of law, ethics, and common sense. At the July meeting, it gets even worse because Trustee Thomas insulted the work of the Committee on Committees. Thomas stated that his lawyer friends would, quote, use four-letter words to describe the conflict of interest policy, close quote, and he's not even at now. That insult, aimed at the work product of the supervisor of New Trier Township, four volunteer professionals, and a member of the township staff, is highly offensive and unprofessional. Thomas also stated that he would not abide by the conflict of interest policy if enacted, if enacted. You said you would abstain, which is a misuse of the word, but you went on to clarify, stating you would not abide by it unless it was reviewed by your personal lawyer, who you said, quote, rip it apart, close quote. It's my understanding also that Trustee Thomas has provided insider information about township decisions to the WYO. Given this history, the working committee developed a comprehensive, specific, and robust conflict of interest policy. Having been called out in public and in the press, Trustee Thomas now wants a single-sentence policy to require him merely to recuse himself from the funding vote. It's too late for that now. That should have been done years ago. A minimal policy would allow him to continue to conduct business as he pleases, including continued consultation with the WYO about the grants process. In this context, nothing less than the robust, specific policy recommended by the working committee would be sufficient to prevent further ethical lapses. I call for the trustees to adopt the conflict of interest policy prepared by the Committee on Committees without further delay. Further, I would ask the trustees to rein in the unprofessional comments made by Trustee Thomas, such as those made at the July 2021 public meeting, and his stated intent to defy the proposed policy if enacted. I would call on the trustees to censure Trustee Thomas if that action continues. Thank you very much for hearing me out. Thank you for your time. Are there any other public comments related to the conflict of interest policy? Seeing none, I am here to resubmit the conflict of interest policy to the Board of Trustees, which had been tabled at the last meeting. Per the discussion of the committee... You're going to need to have a motion to get it off the table and back on the floor. I'd like to move to take it off the table. So you're going to move to do that? Yes, please. Okay. The second? I'll second it. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Seeing no opposition, we'll now go into discussion of the conflict of interest policy that was tabled from last month. Pursuant to the Board's discussion, 
Um, I did ask whether the committee wanted to revise anything in the, in the report in the conflict of interest policy, and it was agreed that um, the conflict of interest policy as submitted was submitted for a reason. It was submitted because we were, we were trying to address um, an, an, a, a problem on our board, and we were trying to make ourselves better. And this policy was the product of multiple meetings and multiple minds, and we believe that it should have a, uh, that it should be considered for adoption. Um, also on the recommendation of the, the board, we looked at all the other communities, Glencoe, Wilmette, Winnetka, all have even more robust conflict of interest policies and ethic policies that go on for many more than two pages. Um, and the attempt to streamline ethics into a single sentence is, is a fool's errand. Um, there are certainly religions for that, and that's fine. Um, but we need to have something that will make it clear for us so we can move forward and operationalize the concerns of the Agency Oversight Committee and now the Committee on Committees. Um, so with that, um, I want to open the, discuss the floor for discussion. I have a question under, um, this, this is, a lot of work went into this, a lot of thought went into this. Nothing is going to be perfect. Now, you could hire an end of, you could hire an employment or a labor attorney to try to resolve our issues here, and nothing's going to be perfect. Whatever we agree on, we can always amend and supplement as we go along if things aren't working. But here's my question. Um, under business, financial, and personal interest, the paragraph, nevertheless, it's after the three bullet points. Yes. Yeah. Number three, um, it is a business, financial, or personal interest is not created mm -hmm. if someone has received or is currently receiving services from an entity. Yes. Yeah. What I'm thinking of is potentially somebody serving on a committee <laughs> that is receiving a him or her or their family members are receiving. How is that not a... Um, a uh, personal, how is that not at least a, uh, some kind of conflict, isn't it? It's at, at the same level as the, as the general public. So, for instance, would be, you know, someone who, who brought their kid to the power of attorney um, workshop with North Shore Suburban Lake Lake, um, or someone who had, who is using um, our place. Um, you're, you're acting in the same regard as the general public. You're not having that, you don't have insider information or inside um, or um, a you know red phone to the to the head of the or agency to try to give them any any kind of information. If if you're serving on a committee, an advisory committee, yes, and your child is benefiting from an agency on that committee, right? How is that not a potential? I mean, if it's not a conflict, there's the appearance of impropriety. You're going to be voting to. To give that agency money or not to give it money? So this was discussed at the committee. We don't want to discourage people who are passionate about the concerns that we are funding, so disability rights, mental health, senior citizens, youth, um, because they might have a youth. They might be a senior. They might, you know, that's not a reason to, to have somebody be recused from, from the committee. So we did expressly... Um, exclude that as, a, as an area that would require someone to recuse themselves or to disclose um, any kind of um, potential conflict. So we recognize that could be could have been seen that way, um, but that's why it's expressly carved out. But what I'm saying is you're, 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 carving, you're, you're, you're carving that out for committee members, but yet you're saying that a trustee is, it's impossible for a trustee who may serve in some capacity for one of the agencies to be impartial or to somehow remove any bias. It, it seems, yeah. it, there seems to be um, something inconsistent with that. It's a little troubling to me. Let me give you another example. Uh, either a member of the committee or a trustee is using uh, one of the agencies in a very confidential manner. The family services people of course. constantly are doing confidential of course. stuff. And is it up to the trustee or committee member to recuse themselves? Is it up to them to admit that they involved in a that sort of relationship? Uh, I, I think that's a tough one. 
Well, that's expressly why we carved it out, so that it was not an issue. Mm. If you're receiving a service the same way any member of the, of the public would, it, we don't consider that to be the kind of interest that we're concerned about in this policy. I don't buy that. I, I don't either. I think I agree with Elliot and John. I think that you're setting yourself up <coughs> for a bad situation because as soon as you get somebody who has a child who receives services from the committee, that should disqualify them or at least clarify it in the policy and say those people are not to vote or be involved in those discussions. I, I don't know why, I agree with uh, Elliot's comment, I don't know why you're carving out committee members, but you're not carving out everybody else. That seems inconsistent. And I also think there is some inconsistency between paragraph one and paragraph three. Paragraph one limits it to four years. Paragraph three says if you have a historical relationship, that's enough to create conflict. I think those are, that's a small point compared to what Elliot said, but I think those are also potentially tweaked a bit, but um, I agree. I, I read this over again, and I thought that it was very good at this point, um, but I did have some questions, and the one that Elliot's raising is the one that jumped out at me specifically. I had some other stuff, but I'll hold comment on that, but it's a valid point. If a committee member, child, or themselves, or an aunt, or an uncle, or a grandparent, or a parent who receives services, that should disqualify them from any kind of action, if you're going to disqualify everybody else along the way. But I, I want to say I'm troubled by that, that seeming inconsistency, but I don't want to throw the baby out with the bed, but I think right. this is a valiant effort, and I'm inclined to want to give this a try in action. To, to, to let's see if this will work, and we can amend and modify, but I very much would like to move forward and get something on the books and move past this. And I think this is a valiant, I think this, is a, this was a lot of thought went into this. I agree. And it, it's certainly, um, I just I want to clarify that the the exemptions in the nevertheless paragraph, I don't, um, at least they're not supposed to be um, separated by committee member versus board of trustees. So uh, for all affiliated people, those are just the definitions. But if, if that's not clear, please let me know and we can try to revise. That's fine. Right. I, I understood. Yes. Yeah. A couple of the comments just to throw them out there. You talk about a disclosure form. Has one been created? It has not been created. Right. But it's, it's hard sim to pass simple on as simple to as one, two, three, four. All right. Yes, I'm not envisioning anything for them. But it's it's difficult to agree to something when you don't have all of the paperwork that is related to it. So that's one comment. The last comment I'll make, I got others, but I'll leave it at that. I don't know that we want to place the responsibility and I said this last time. Yeah of regulating this entire situation on Brian or Brian's successor, I don't know that that's the right place for enforcement purposes. And I raised that last time, who's gonna enforce this? Who's gonna you know, quantify it? And so that's my leadership. So those, yeah. that being said, I agree with Elliot, I'd like to move forward as well, but I still have some major concerns which I think need to be addressed, if not immediately, certainly, in the near future, including the disclosure. Yeah, those are good points. Um, and I, I would like to see how it operates, um, you know, in the real world, if you will. Um, Should you be responsible for uh, regulating the conflict of interest? Isn't that your job as supervisor? Yeah, it seems to me it is. Mm -hmm. I, know that, I know that's adding a new layer of responsibility, but better that than an employee of the township, it just yeah. doesn't make sense to me. That's, that just doesn't make sense. Um, I would consider that as a friendly amendment if that is, is something you would like to move. Um, there was one other thing I was going to say. And that was, hold on. Excuse Where'd me. it go? Hold on. I'm having a moment. <laughs> you mentioned. You're having a senior moment and you're not even a senior. Yeah. Yeah. I'm having a day cool moment. <laughs> <laughs> I will think of what it was. Um, oh, gosh, it was important to. Oh! Um, the the issue about enforcement. I had been given that some thoughts um, as well on the way here, and it really came down to me um, as you know, sunshine being the disinfectant, right? This is a disclosure form that will be foyable, um, that will be out there for the public to see, um, and if people want to hold us accountable, they can hold us accountable. 
I don't see that as hugely different from self-regulating, to be honest. I mean, I, it's kind of the same coin, but I accept your premise, but I, you're, you're not, what you're saying to me is really not going to enforce this per se, in a, in a real sense. I mean, you're, you're saying that if you want to raise it, if you want to bring it to the table, that's their prerogative, but we're not going to enforce it. So if, if we see a conflict, somebody, I think somebody should be in a position to say, you're out, or you can't vote on that, or you have to recruit yourself. And again, that's why I think it, the responsibility lies with you, the supervisor, rather than an employee of the township. Okay. Because to make that kind of a statement and to take that kind of position, we shouldn't put one of our employees in that kind of position. That's rude. Those are good points. So that's my take on that one. So, I, yeah, I would ask that if nothing else, we amend it to, <coughs> you know, rather than have Brian be the regulator, you be the regulator. Right. Or the supervisor. Not, right. I, I don't think it should be personal. Of course. In any of Yes. And I don't think we did, right? We did it as we mm -hmm. used this title. But, um, but it, yeah. Um, and on, yeah. on the disclosure form, do you have a sense of what it's going to be? It, like I said, it was going to be something simple. One, two, three, four. These are my disclosures. Okay. Yeah. Keep it simple. Um, but that would be that the enforcement for in, if the amendment passes for the supervisor is the disclosure itself. That's the enforcement. Um, then it's then it's available in public record and can be used um, when it, when people are concerned. Okay. Um, but also it can it can um, be help, used for a basis to ask um, one of our own to recuse themselves. A couple of points. One, uh, let me remind you that I think I started this whole housing event four years ago when I recused myself. But when I was the liaison to the committee that was considering all of this, and I recused myself. Can you speak up for the re for the for the recorder? Yeah. Oh, sorry. Four years ago, when I was this uh, liaison as uh, trustee to the committee that generated this. Uh, I had recused myself because of my involvement with the WIO. And, but that didn't carry through to later in the year when the board did not break out the youth groups uh, as a separate entity and we voted as we did every year afterwards uh, for the whole package. And I thought to myself, you know, should I remind them that I'm there? And I thought, well, you know, I could, but I did my fault. Because um, I believe a conflict of interest policy is, is vital. I don't think this is the right one, but that's a personal thing. I'll think about as a trustee whether I want to vote for it or not. Um, I don't think you want Brian to be uh, enforcing. He doesn't like this policy. He, he doesn't dislike it. He wants it much shorter because he sent us an email saying that uh, yesterday. Um, but let's look at this. Let's back away and take the big view. I don't know. I'm, I'm just telling you what Brian has told me in the past year or so or more. It's ever more increasingly difficult to get volunteers for anything. Uh, part of the reason is that the volunteer force used to be a wonderful source of bodies on committees, on this, that, and the other. Half of them have gone to work. Call the ladies of our community. Uh, I understand that. I've been involved in enough other years. Yeah. Forgetting the WIO, I was involved in the right of way and stuff like that. And in the caucuses, <coughs> it's sort of son of a gun. Now, the question I have, and I don't have the answer, is is somebody looking who is being hard sold to join the committee because you have to do some selling? looks at this and says, holy cow, do I want to get involved in this sort of thing? I, I agree with the concept of not having a conflict, but I don't know, it's sort of mm, bureaucratic or something. That's a, a point of view that my wife, who's no longer a volunteer because she's a little aged, uh, she gave up volunteering when something, not, not this, but something came up and she was saying, they're just spending too much time on stuff that's not important. I don't think, I think this is important, so that's my point. The point is, ladies and gentlemen, 
who are reluctant volunteers to start with might take a look, might, might not, take a look at this and say, I don't want to get involved in something that's being done by lawyers. That's simple. I do appreciate that. I'm, my, my own experience, you know, comes from, you know, moving to the community and, and signing up for the talent bank for Village of Wilmette. Did I ever look at the conflict of interest policy before I did that? I did not, but it's robust. <laughs> and it would have been applying to me. Um, I just wanted to serve. Um, thankfully, we have fabulous volunteers who self-select, essentially, for their for quality and their passion. Um, and I think that at least my perception from having seen these committees is that they would appreciate the professionalism um, and uh, of this kind of policy and trying to kind of create a more, uh, um, it, to codify these ethics so we kind of, we know should it be um, the truth, um, but this could guide us to make sure that we're not going to have any problems in the future. Gail, can I ask a question um, about number four of the policy? Um, and first, I just want to go on record saying that I wholeheartedly believe there's no question that we need some sort of um, conflict of interest policy with some sort of detail. Um, but my question about number four is, okay, so it says any staff members having a conflict of interest concerning an entity shall not have any involvement with such entity's affiliation or relationship with a new true township. I'm just having a little bit of a hard time wrapping my brain around that one. Could you just give us an example of uh, what that might look like? Right, so that would have to do sim like similar to the, to the RFP policy. Um, if somebody has a conflict of interest regarding a particular, you know, communications agency, um, they shouldn't be the ones creating the, the request for proposals for our new communications manager um, and then submitting it to someone they have a conflict with, that would, they would have a conflict with. Do you have any other examples, perhaps, Diana, from real life? Uh, I think by involving the staff members. Uh, that's an issue. I think that that's an issue. Mm -hmm. uh, and that, that, as we know, that we're putting a certain amount of level of issue on that and responsibility. And like we're talking about Brian, I think that that's an essence saying, do you know so and so, or do, or if someone's jacked and told, you know. And I just don't think that the employees, we're looking at this, the assumption that the employees are. Are part of the organization, but they're not the decision makers. Not the decision makers. Sure, if that makes sense. Um, and I think we should leave it at that level. And um, all of the employees, we all understand. <coughs> we all have ethics. We all understand about the township. And I think we need to that make that assumption. Having that, never had any issues with, of that nature. We may continue that way. Well, it, it should. I yes. mean, that's. You know, the monitoring, the oversight of that, of the group, is, is an important part of that. And I think that that would become evident if that's the case. I, I don't think number four is draconian in any way. The way I interpret number four is, let's say one of our um, employees was using a family service agency and getting a little bit of conflict. Yeah. What number four says to me is that that employee simply should make sure that he or she's not involved in any of the funding decisions related to that agency. That, I think, is very... Uh, it doesn't say that. It doesn't no. say that. Let's, let's fix that, because I, I, that's, I think, what we want it to be. Yes. Why, um, am I, why am I reading it so, narrow, so narrowly? Why are you like to read it for? Okay, so why any future mean? staff members having conflict of interest concerning you, you shall not have any involvement. I, Elliot, I think it goes back to your original question, which is who's included, who's excluded, exactly. and for what reason? So, and to me, the most the most obvious is somebody receiving services, whether it's an employee, whether it's a committee member, whether it's a board of trustees. That that to me is the most obvious of all. I mean, to serve on a board is less egregious to me than receiving services in terms of a conflict, potential conflict, a potential conflict. And also the appearance of 
Right. Sure. Um, Alan, if you would like to respond. I'd like to explain since I was involved in drafting it. That's why we carved that out of a, a personal interest. If you're receiving a service, you are by definition not conflicted. Therefore, a new church staffer who's receiving services can maintain their confidentiality about that and it's not an issue. But if they're serving as a decision maker on the board of an agency, they shouldn't be dealing with that agency's relationship with the township. And the committee felt very strongly that if it starts at the top with the trustees, it goes all the way down through the staff and the volunteers on the committee. And they wanted, as a group, we wanted to make sure that the same standards apply. And that's why we keep all these people. Thank you. Um, and I think that, and Stefan, obviously, you can speak for yourself, um, but what you're concerned is you don't like the car out. But yes, so the carve out's there, and I agree with the carve out because mm -hmm. I want to encourage people to have their mental health care. Yeah, I think so. it was your suggestion. Yes. Yeah. So, I um, think for I think for number four, it's just the wording because when it says staff members should not have any involvement with yeah. an entity's affiliation, um, I don't know. I'm almost reading that as if they can't receive services from that entity because it's saying they should have no involvement with the entity's affiliation. Well, the entity is affiliated with Nutrier. I don't know. Maybe I'm just talking myself in, in circles here, but <laughs> it, um, it, it, I don't know. It just didn't make sense to me, but I might, maybe I'm the only one having the, an issue with this one. It's a concern that we can, we can address. Um, I think it's that last clause, such entities funding relationship with MTT or contracting relationship with MTT. Funding kind of covers it. That's the way I read it. I'm a staff member. I'm going to take advantage of some of the services this agency offers to me. Even though I don't live in the township, I work in the township, I love this agency, and I'm going to have nothing to do with funding decisions for the agency. That's how I interpret it. But they don't. Let me, let me ask you a question. Okay. Yeah, I was going to ask the audience as well. Doesn't the committee member vote on the, the same issue? In other words, yeah. when it comes to allocating funds, we approve, we make final approval, but the initial approval is done by the committee, and so people are directly, um, are voting directly on funding, and yet the way this is written, they can receive services from that particular entity. I, again, I think that's a blatant conflict. I really do. I don't disagree with it, but again, I think taking the <laughs> document in its entirety, that one flaw potentially to me, doesn't queer the document. I still think this is a. I still think this is a viable policy, and, and I support. I think I'm going to support this as is. But I want to see in practice how it goes. What do we do when we adopt a law? We sometimes amend it. We sometimes revise it. Let's. This is a working document, but I think we've got to. We've got to move forward. <laughs> but, I agree. But isn't it? Isn't it just no. as easy to say no, no, don't no, carve out anybody? anybody? It's a working document right now it is, but if we adopt it, it becomes policy. It becomes a policy which can be amended and revised. It's not a constitution. Let me ask you a question. Shouldn't we, if we're going to make this a policy, shouldn't we ask our corporate counsel if they see any holes in it? We have a corporate counsel, don't we? I know we, we do. have. We had counsel from the previous administration. They have not been in contact with me. I emailed them to ask them to let me know their preferred contact information, and they have not responded. I'm sorry, they haven't responded. No. The reason I ask, I recognize that they're around the table at. except me, the lawyer. Yeah. Diane, too. But we do have. Last time I talked, had reason to ask him. I got a very logical answer. It took him a week or two to figure out. It was kind of the municipal issue, not this. And I just 
would like to see our council look at this uh, and tell us that it's a good policy. There are is that what you <laughs> some things that you'd like to get practice on, but or you can say, gee, you know, I think you guys want to do this. I don't think they'll say that. You never know. I'd be much more comfortable if I'm being asked to because approve a policy that has been approved by a corporate lawyer. I mean, it's a lawyer, but yeah. Gail, are you saying that you got a hold of count and tried to reach council and then you get back to this? So they, other, right? their website only has an info at email address. So I sent an email to that saying what is our attorney's <laughs> email address. Oh, I'll call them myself. Yeah, I've given you an email from with his um, email. Jim. He sent the uh, snail mail that he sent. But but it's his email. Just reach out on his email. It's not on there. It is. You show me. <laughs> I mean, yeah. it, it, hopefully we can find it, but yeah, I sent another yeah, response to him earlier I'll, today. I'll send that to you yeah. first thing tomorrow because he, he responds. I mean, he, yeah, he's available. Quickly. Yeah. 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 And he has, yeah, he does. I think maybe that their app isn't the greatest thing. Oh, right the website. The website. Oh, the website. The website. And maybe they're oh, the website, right. Yeah. They may not have some right. like monitoring it properly or something. And I don't know what their working situation is with them. Um, True, with COVID. Or, yeah. Mm -hmm. I'll send that to you tomorrow because there was an email I sent you that he had sent that letter. Right. And his email was on there. Jim. Yeah. Right. Jim. Right. So yeah. I, yeah. I did not have his email address. So I, I sent that, but I think that, that would be or even a call would be. And then involving the staff on that, I don't know what I mean, you talked about Brian's position or how Brian feels or how would he feel if he, and stuff and mention that. Would it make sense to in particular, the number four have, have staff's reaction to that. I mean, when you look at this kind of a thing, yeah. right? I, what is? I mean, you could get really, and I'm not a lawyer, but you could get into. Okay, what is the entity? How far down does that go? Does that mean, as silly as it sounds, does that mean grand food? Does that mean? Does come, I mean, does this mean just? It doesn't specifically say. It's not silly. Um, we contract with grand food, so that right. is, it's something that we have to be concerned about. Um, we can't, you know. We contract with the JP Pizza. If someone owns JP Pizza, I'm not JP saying Pizza filling that. I'm just yeah. saying I'm just looking at it from. I'm just from. I'm remembering the a very recent example at the Board of Review. Um, staff can also have ethical concerns, major ethical concerns, um, and I'm sure everybody's read about those. Um, we need to be very. We need to be just as careful with staff as elected officials. Um, staff often has a lot of outside power. In a local government. Um, I'll, I'll make a big, big general statement. As some of you know I've served on a lot of different boards, small and big. Um, it doesn't bother me if we pull this over to the next meeting, and the reason is it's policy. And policy, yeah, it can be changed, but let's not walk into something and ignore it, taking all the steps we have to do to make it as right as we think we can. And, or you say, oh, that's okay, we, we can always change it. If we're going to make a policy, I'd like to think that we're going to make a policy that is as good <laughs> as we can get it. And I don't think that, I don't think this policy is good, bad, or indifferent, but I think is I'd like to have more input on it, particularly from our company lawyer. Uh, we know because he sent us an email that Brian would like the short form, a short form. And re recall that Brian was in the deliberation. He might have preferred if all things were, you know, if he was the, the only decision maker to have a short form. But he was involved with all of these dis these deliberations, and he was heavily in involved. And, and so, now we're going to learn that he's not going to be the enforcer that the supervisor that would take a deep breath here. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> not me. Here, Gail. Yes. It's, this is a very technical point. In, yes, in the nevertheless paragraph, you have number one, you have number two, and then you have two number three. Ah! So thank you. The latter one of those should be coming four. That That's is all. <laughs> so the current friendly amendments um, are the four. Um, <laughs> changing the community. Um, where are we? Well, any reference to Brian's current position to supervisor? Paragraph four. 
adding, changing the, um, after entities, putting funding relationship, so instead of affiliation or funding relationship with NTT. Um, with regard to the carve-out, can you do a carve-out, but say that they can't vote on funding? I mean, that that's the logical compromise, I would think. So, interestingly, at least, and this is only from my own personal experience, and obviously you've had a, a few more years of committee liaisonships, um, most people are very apt to tell us that they have a personal relationship as far as service goes um, and to explain that, and it's openly disclosed. I've never been concerned about that. Um, I'm not worried about people disclosing it. I think they'll disclose it as well. But if you're going to say it's good for the geese, it's good for the gander, then you've got to be consistent, and that's the way to be consistent, in my opinion. If you, if you okay. say you can't be involved, whether it's staff or board members or whatever, you can say the same thing as a committee member. That it's, it's every team, because that's most likely where it's going to happen. That's the most likely people to be receiving services are probably related to the committee. At least that, you know, from historically, that's where a lot, a lot of the parents on the committee have children who are receiving benefits from the township or the township program. So that's where it's going to, that's where the rubber's going to hit the road. So I think it's a simple response is that if you do have a conflict, that you're not, you don't vote, period, as a, as a committee member. <clears throat> My and just as a reminder that it does apply to all to the board. And remember, it does apply to everyone: the board, the staff, the volunteer members. Yep, everybody. Yeah. All members of the township. Right. The volunteers and staff and left it. I mean, I don't even know why you would carve it out. I, I know what you're trying to accomplish, but there's no need to carve it out if they have a conflict. They don't vote. End of discussion. The, one of the things that uh, a visitor brought up is when we get, we the board, the, the trustees get to voting on these grants, we sort of do it in on mobs, big right. mobs. And if there's somebody like me that has a conflict, it's already declared at 17 times a Sunday. Uh, and we don't take out of the big group, whatever I or somebody else has a conflict with, then it just sort of gets automatically done, and that's what's happened for three or four years. And yeah, so I think you correct that, John. You just say where there's a conflict, you treat that separately and take yeah. a separate vote on it. That's yeah. It's a good practical solution to it. It was lazy on my part, basically. You know, the rest of the trustees, would, I apologize for it, but uh, it's something we ought to be aware of. Because it'll come up in the future. Some trustee will have conflict and they've got to say, let us, we've got 22 agencies here, let's remove one of them because I can't vote on that. Um, I'd like to recognize Ellen. Um, I think that on, uh, uh, you know, um, I'm concerned that if a volunteer <laughs> or a staff member uh, is required to disclose that they're receiving mental health services, that yeah. that's a violation of, of law. Absolutely. And so Absolutely. I think that it makes sense when you suggest that, that we carve out service, just like we carved out attending an event, giving a donation, that does not constitute a conflict of interest on this uh, uh, But you don't think receiving services creates an automatic conflict of interest? Absolutely. Uh, but if, you're you on it, if, you're, if you're voting on it, if you're voting on that particular agency, how do you require someone to disclose they're receiving mental health services? I accept that. I understand, I understand what you're saying, but mm -hmm. uh, how about all other instances? Well, I think that if when if someone's assigned to a committee and it comes to the attention of the chair uh, that that person has a close <laughs> personal affiliation, um, that then that some of the other language in the conflict would kick in. All right. So. Would you be would you be comfortable if we carved out mental health issues? Because um, that would be compliant with HIPAA. I mean, that's what you're pulling from 
Also, low income issues. Some of these are need based. People don't want people to know necessarily. Very private. Very private. Mm -hmm. um, so, I'm, uh, you know, obviously you guys, you can move for an amendment on that, but that would not be considered a, a friendly amendment um, at this time. Um, at, at this point in the debate, I think the question is. Um, And um, correct, correct if I'm wrong, I'll call you the parliamentary at the moment. Um, and if I call for a question and it doesn't pass, we're just back at the base, right? Okay. Correct. All right. So I'll yeah. I'll call to question. I'll call for a question um, with. So the the motion is to adopt the conflict of interest policy with the revisions as stated. So changing. Um, the, sorry, we're also changing the, the date at the beginning and the first. In the first line to today's date, um, changing the, the second three to four, changing um, the paragraph four as previously discussed, and changing all references to Brian's current position to supervisor. Is there a second? I second. Is there a second? Are you suggesting we move ahead before a couple of council looks at this? That is, the, that is the motion on the floor. All those in favor of the motion? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Aye. Aye. All those, um, uh, what's it called, abstaining? Danielle, what was your vote? It's aye. Yes. Aye. To, um, so you would vote in favor of the conflict of interest policy? With those amendments that you would right with, again back and I would vote differently if you included the fact that committee members, if they have a conflict, cannot vote on funding. That that's my hang up. I'm right, but we define conflict differently. Pardon. That's the question. Um, but at this point, we do have three votes in favor to two votes, so the motion does pass. Okay. Moving on to approval of claims, John Excuse Thomas. Me, are we still going to ask our corporate counsel for an opinion? I'm happy to do so. Okay. Yes. Like you said, we can always amend. <laughs> I have one issue under uh, con uh, continuing business. Continuing business. Um, John and I have been discussing, and we've uh, now that we're back in um, business, so to speak, <laughs> discussing the signature check. Oh, yes. Okay. Okay. And we want to discuss that. Um, you'll recall the question was, do, does the accountants, not us, not the law, not the <laughs> statutes, does the accountant feel it necessary, as they did some time ago when we asked them this question, that two signatures were needed on checks? And we've gone for years with the supervisor signing and the trustee signing after Diane prepares the check. Uh, it would appear that the accountant, our accountant, is comfortable with just one signature on the check. And it would be either a supervisor or a trustee, but the way it's been going, I think Diane gets a chance to sign all the checks because the law says we, the board, have to audit the checks. And that's what these payroll and town fund tax disbursement checks right. disbursement do to meet the letter of the law. <coughs> As a practical matter, anybody that wants to come in and look at these checks, fine. But Diane, as supervisor, like Alan before, signs them all. And they're okay. happy with it. So Diane doesn't sign checks. Right. Nobody knows. You get a beautiful folder to scale to sign. <laughs> yes, you're lucky. Um, <laughs> If the accountant's uh, happy, uh, I think we all ought to be happy with one signature because we have the check and balance of these check registers. 
for routine checks? Let me talk about it. Let me look at their checks. So. Well, but I just like out of a good governance. You seem to know I mean, things. They have proved that, that meaning, like you all do. Right. Right. Mary, you didn't think we were going to be asking you questions. Socratic. Um, but yeah. Um, so let's. Let's put that in the same um, discussion as the financial institution varying um, as far as changes to our, our county practices to best, for best practices. Um, all right, so at this point, I'd like Sean Thomas to move to, to approve the claim. Yeah, we need, we need to put something in the minutes about these check registers. Please. Oh, so I move that we approve the Check register for the new Peoria Township payroll uh, for the period of July 1st to July 31st, 2021, starting with check 7845 and finishing with check 7866 in the amount of $25,237.71. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Oh, oh yeah, roll call money. Roll call money. Okay. Okay. I got I was getting used to it now we were on yeah. Zoom. Okay. Uh Supervisor Spencer Rivenberg. Yes. Uh, Trustee Moser. Yes. Trustee Robin. Yes. Trustee Rubin. Yes. Trustee Thomas. Yes. Approved on the roll call vote. Which I to go on out of town. Okay, I move that we approve the Check register for the new Peoria Township Town Fund for the period of July 1st, 2021 to July 31st, 2021, beginning with check number 26207 and through check 26240 and a dollar amount of $42,109.70. Second. Will you call, call the uh, roll? Uh, Supervisor Mr. Eisenberg? Yes. Trustee Moser? Yes. Trustee Robin? Yes. Trustee Rubin? Yes. Trustee Thomas? Yes. Okay. That leads us to losing our agenda. Got it. Um, we are now in line for a motion to adjourn. Is there such a motion? So moved. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. All those opposed? What's Seeing next? none, we are adjourned. What's the next one, mate? September, I think it was 14th. Yeah. Yeah. September 14th to avoid all holidays. Thank you all. Have a good night. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Have fun. Mm-hmm. <laughs>